All right, some walk and talk video. Been a while. Yeah, nobody really to talk to. <laughs> YouTube's kind of kind of a wasteland and such. I made that complaint before, so eh, okay. Um, people are watching videos, I suppose, but they're not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not the ones I'm watching. Um, anyway, so Anaconda Vod has done the. I'm not saying there's no truth. I'm just saying there's no way to get there, or something like that. Um, still pooing on logic as if uh, truth acquisition is some sort of tool, you know, that we're just using it to manipulate um, reality. We're not attempting, honestly, to describe it. Um, I just think that's, you could say that about religious kooks. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um, they're obviously distorting and perverting reason. Um, you know, to make it possible to rationalize. They're rationalizing, um, you know, nonsense. Um, what can be understood as nonsense. Um, so he's just using these silly examples like, um, oh, look, our language is not good enough because we can't describe the sky in all of its skyness. <laughs> yeah, we have, yeah, well, we can describe it in basically um, sufficient to the purpose, which is of what utility is it? <laughs> yeah, what does it mean? Oh, that's right, nothing. Um, it's like describing the World Series or something. Obviously, it's, it's nothing described, honestly. But a uh, soap opera. <laughs> you know, that the big, strong men are watching. <laughs> yeah, it's a girly, it's a girly show. Um, you know, you know it's, a, it's a chick film. Uh, so anyway. Um, but yeah, the other argument he's making is that uh, using and uh, manipulating, so this is the, the joke of it, right? He's, he's, he's manipulating the use of words to imply uh, a weakness in things that doesn't really exist because he's just using examples that aren't really applicable to the mean, aren't applicable to the, the vast majority of the use of it. So because one mad scientist, you know, tries to sew, uh, I don't know, a duck's bill on an elephant's ass, all science is bullshit. And he's kind of doing the same thing. All logic is meaningless because uh, the mathematics we use is base 10 instead of base 8 or base whatever, uh, <laughs> which is just completely perverting perspective. No one's arguing that the base we have chosen for our mathematics is logical. What's being argued is that the numbers are logical. That the implications of establishing a value weight for a number uh, means that there is such a thing as a half, and that there is such a thing as a times two. <laughs> you know, that there is a squared and there is a cubed and uh, whatnot. So, um, you know, it's just a it's just, it's just such an overt and obvious manipulation of data, uh, which most people do, right? They scapegoat uh, things with uh, bad examples. And then he'll use words like scapegoat, like that yeah, isn't exactly what he's doing. Uh, straw manning and scapegoating uh, entirely. The very function of intelligence. And so here we are, 20th century, right, 21st century beings. Um, and he, you know, he's trying to drag us back into some point where we had some sort of reasonable doubt. <laughs> you know, when the evidence wasn't in. Um, you know, where you really had no... You know, before the release of the OJ film, with him wearing the gloves and the Bruno Mollies. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, really game over, right? Uh, I mean, it was over by Honest Men much sooner, but... Uh, yeah, it just took away all doubt. Um, all capacity to rationalize an excuse. There was no more rationalizations. They, they were... Uh, uh, um, they went from lame to just ludicrous. Which I guess lame is a shorthand for. Uh, but anyway. Um, well, I guess not. Lame is, you know, broken. So, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so... Um, so yeah, this is just still part of his convenience philosophy of um, raising the specter of doubt uh, that we should some 
for some reason we should be doubtful and uncertain and uh, you know mystified when here we have split the atom we've lifted nature's skirt as high as you can lift it <laughs> yeah, we can see exactly what she's got um, come on there's the mysteries are over um, the volume of data about our psychology and what we're the, the the silly internal wanky game we're all playing with ourselves essentially through a mechanism of psychology we're essentially stroking each other's privates <laughs> you know with our psychology through the mechanism this medium of psychology um, and that's about all that's going on here but they want to glorify the game because they have to glorify their own um, the own the mechanism that's keeping them in the game uh, you know they don't want to lose their addiction they want the soap opera to mean something and so they can't see it as a soap opera because then they're going to be embarrassed and humiliated like oh fuck I'm watching a soap opera I'm a sissy uh, and they don't want to have to fess up but that's all they're doing they're you know, they're crying watching the chick film. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, these are, these are really gross kind of uh, misogynistic comparisons. I might as well talk about women drivers next. So I apologize to the ladies. <laughs> you know, even that's kind of, to the women's, to the non-men listening, I apologize for targeting your uh, kind of humiliating ancestry, let's put it that way. But men are also, like I said, I'm talking to humans, and I'm basically pointing out that you're all assholes, and uh, you've all got your little thumbs up your little butts. Um, you know, you're <laughs> completely confused uh, by the purveyors of nonsense, from big media to little media, like Hantakantavads of the world, little soft soap salesmen, um, you know, trying to tell you little fables and little bedtime stories uh, to give you some sense of purpose and functionality that you do not possess. Uh, some sense of, I am worth it. <laughs> you know, it just can't be demonstrated with something called reasonable evidence. Uh, sensible evidence. Uh, within the realm of our scope of credible evidence it's just your own testimony you know and the Kondavad says so life is mysterious he says so <laughs> yeah we can't know the basic dynamic and like I said we've already nailed that down you can't reasonably believe in God anymore you can only rationalize an excuse to believe in God uh, but you can't apply reason or logic uh, because the evidence of the incredibility of the testimony, the incredibility of the overt story, uh, the, the perfectly viable alternative explanation of creation, uh, you're just doomed uh, to a failed existence, you know, clinging to that babble. Um, and uh, like I said, he's just giving people who are trapped in that addiction, who are wanking off to their World Series game, he's giving them an excuse to keep it up, so to speak. <laughs> you know, enjoy yourself. Don't, don't be a responsible human being. Don't apply reason. Uh, don't be a clinical human doing that smartification shit and the truth shit, because that's no fun. And it isn't. It's a, that part of it is true. Okay? The truth is not going to be a good time. Uh, the facts of our, of this rocky road that we must travel, uh, this dangerous, insidiously brutal road, yeah, that you're just not going to, you know, there's no cartoons or comic book reading on the Trail of Tears, so to speak. And if you want to get... If you want to play, if you're going to, if you're going to be an honest human being, you know, you're going to have to, you know, you're going to get hurt. 
<laughs> yeah, life's going to hurt you. Uh, the truth is going to hurt. Because uh, it's going to break down all the, all the illusions of warmth and comfort you have. And it's going to make you feel your vulnerability and uh, the tragedy of its creation. The, the horror of its lineage and history. You're going to see the bastard in your origin and uh, it's going to embarrass you. Um, but anyway, I mean this is what this conversation ultimately is about, is the validity of this truth of evolution, this truth of a, you know, a, a monkey that, you know, if given proper incentive, will piss in its own mouth. Uh, you know, this this animal that just isn't uh, intrinsically or fundamentally at all functional or youthful or purposeful or uh, doesn't even, you know, in the evolutionary scheme of things, you know, is a low order. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, unlikely to win the contest. But again, knowing the truth, you're going to know that the contest means nothing. Being the best crocodile is not a contest you want to enter. Uh, there's no victory in winning. Uh, be the biggest asshole. Yeah, there's no reason to enter that contest. Uh, you will not... <laughs> you can only lose. Okay, either overtly or indirectly. Um, so yeah, the yeah, the, the, it just seems like sensible people. If you're a sensible person. You know, it just should be. It should occur to you. You know, it should roll in your head a little bit. Oh yeah, there's all this game in my brain. You know, all this manipulation and. Uh, can I get them to like me? Can I get them to need me? Uh, I want, I need. Oh, if I only had this, if I only had that. Uh, you know, when I get this, it's, you know, when I have supervision, everything's going to be so cool. Uh, you can see your shit. So why don't you just fess up? And say you're playing a shit game. You're caught up in a bunch of childish you know, notions of substance and meaning. And none of it has any substance or meaning. It's just meaningful because of a psychological mechanism, you know, that you possess that converts absolute shit, uh, you know, into chocolate chip cookies. And that's what your brain does. Your brain converts bullshit into something consumable. Um, that's the, that's the function. That's why we wiggle through the humus. I keep using that metaphor, but we were just worms wiggling through the muck, uh, you know, to get to the goodies, the chocolate bar illusion that your brain keeps putting in front of you, uh, and keeps inspiring this desire. And uh, if you really think about it, not only can you, you know, <laughs> you, know you can erode uh, much of that um, silly passion and become a little more passionate for something more meaningful, um, at least you can divert your passion. That's at minimum. You have that much capacity is to divert your passion into being something rather than just another bumpkin, another another lumpkin on the lumpkin log. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so boo uh, for the Anticondivod straw man uh, scapegoating propaganda show. Uh, this whole implication that, uh, you know, we can't get a grasp on the truth regarding our psychology and the actuality 
of the game we're playing. And as we can, we have. The human race has acquired the knowledge. Uh, you know, and it has, it has implications. That's the downside. Um, and as you start putting all these pieces together, we have a lot of the pieces. Yeah, it's an ugly picture. And that's the, that's the sad part. There's still the Carl Sagan types of the world trying to, you know, take the pieces and make them into a smiley face somehow. But, uh, now if you really look at it, you can see the skull and crossbones that's written all over the game we're playing. Oh. Anyway, I believe that's sufficient. Oh. Yeah, I miss the old walk and talks. <laughs> so, but whatever. Uh, yeah, I've done it. I've been there and done that, right? Almost 3,000 videos on the M. Mindem channel. I suppose I should do something creative as celebration, as <laughs> um, something, but I lack inspiration lately for such nonsense. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, that's, that's enough. Till next time. Alright, a little bit of an add-on. <laughs> still still swimming. Uh, it's cold. Cold, cold, cold. Cold water, cold air. Anyway, but it's swimming. Um, which isn't relevant. But that's the psychology, right? You know, somehow my brain has made that into, you know, something worth doing. And it does it. You know, I... You know, you live while you're alive, but it doesn't mean you can't think while you're alive. You know, but you can't. Um, well, I've done this so many times. There's a difference between philosophy and psychology. You know, and the people ought to label what they're doing. When you're talking this talk up the game crap, that's psychology. It's not philosophy. It's not a, an effort to describe reality. They're trying to sell a form of reality. Trying to sell a mindset for living, not a mindset for thinking, or the truth. It's just a grotesque lack of respect for the truth, for philosophy as an endeavor. This idea of discovery, discovering the truth, revealing the truth, uh, exploring, <laughs> you know, but it's about the truth, and they don't want to go anywhere near that, and they're disguising this mumbo-jumbo, this bullshit, as uh, something somehow related to the dignified endeavor of dissecting uh, and uh, describing reality. Uh, and they're just doing this disgusting clown dance on it. <laughs> you know, and saying, you know, slapping their big flappy feet and their squeaky nose and their antics. Um, smearing that crap on the truth on science, on reason, logic, all these very good words, and they're smearing this cotton candy gippity goop all over it. Um, and so they want to dignify what they're doing, they want to make it seem credible, and it is in fact incredible, uncredible. No, it's just, oh, God, <laughs> I just do, this makes you hate people, anyway, oh, <laughs> anyway, I'm a little deaf in my ears again, 
cold water is even worse for bad ears, but whatever. It does wake you up. <laughs> you, know, you know, you're in the game. But anyway, so, there's not much to show here. Weather's holding, it really isn't that bad. Can't complain, really. No right to complain. It's really been quite nice. Uh, kind of wish I'd gotten more out of it, but I don't want to really let go of it. But, 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 but. No tide, something or other. <laughs> no, it was something, something, something. Yeah. That's good enough. Something, something, something. You know, cliche metaphor thingy. There, done. So, till next time. <sighs> oh, wheelbarrow, I was looking for that. <laughs> yeah, I put it away. Wow, I don't, unbelievable. I don't believe I actually put something away. Shit. Doesn't sound like me. Anyway, flowers are. Mediocre, <laughs> you know, they're coming back over here pretty well. Then damn caterpillars really nailed me. All right, I'll pet the cat. They're saying I must say hello. <clears throat> He's doing really well, very well. Nice the coat. Yeah, he wants to. He wants to lie down. Yes, and go swimming in the grass. Yes, yes he does. Oh, all right, anyway, enough of that shit. So, that's about all. Lots of flowers here. Clump, clumping. <laughs> uh, anyway. Oh, can't go in this way. But the hibiscuses are done. No big flowers. Mm. Onward and outward, or some such crap. Yeah. Sorry, just looking around. These are a lovely dark color here. Just, yeah, very nice. Keep having to look though. Caterpillars, caterpillars. 